with there being hundreds, even thousands of different gaming monitors on the market, choosing the one best suited to you could be a difficult process. With various aspects to look at, such as refresh rates, aspect ratios, curvature, response times, the different connections available, and that's just to name a few, it really can seem like an overwhelming process. But in this video, we're going to be taking a brief look at everything you should consider when you're looking at upgrading or even buying your first gaming monitor and giving you as much information as we can to make it an easy process. Now, whilst many would say that the GPU is the most important component in your gaming setup, it could be strongly argued that the monitor is even more important. After all, your monitor is the component responsible for providing the visual representation of everything you do on your PC. Also, most people will keep a monitor for much longer than they would other components. So, spending a bit more to buy the best that you can get at the start will benefit you in the long run. Here's a quick rundown of what we'll be covering in this video. Screen technology, aspect ratios, screen size and pixel density, curvature, panel types, refresh rates, adaptive sync technologies, HDR and lighting technology. And other features we'll cover are stands, I.O. connectivity and blue light flicker-free technology. Firstly, let's start off by taking a look at the most popular aspect ratios and resolutions. Generally, the aspect ratio directly correlates with the pixel resolution of the monitor, with most monitors falling into one of a few resolutions that are then widened for a wider ratio. And although that might sound a little confusing at first, it's quite easy to understand once broken down. For example, a standard 1080p monitor has a resolution of 1920 by 1080 pixels, which is an aspect ratio of 16 by 9. Whereas an ultra-wide 1080p has a resolution of 2560 by 1080, so although it still features a height of 1080 pixels, horizontally there are more pixels. This then gives us a 21 by 9 aspect ratio. With this in mind, let's take a look at the three most common aspect ratios and their most common resolutions. First up, 16 by 9. This is by far the most common aspect ratio on the market. It's been the standard for most TV manufacturers for many years now, and so it's fully compatible with pretty much anything. The most common resolutions are 1920 by 1080, known as 1080p, 2560 by 1440, known as 1440p, and 3840 by 2160, which is commonly known as 4K or UHD. Recently, we're also starting to see a few 7680 by 4320 or 8K monitors coming to market as well. 21 by 9. This is known as ultra wide and has increased in popularity in recent years for gaming. With the aspect ratio providing more width, it gives the user a better immersion experience, with more being visible in the peripheral vision. Perfect for spotting that enemy who would have not been visible at all had you been using a 16 by 9 monitor. And whilst you're not gaming, this wider aspect ratio is also perfect for viewing films, with the aspect ratio being more suited to that used within the film industry. It eliminates the black bars commonly seen when displaying the content on a 16x9 monitor. This does of course mean that content made for 16x9 monitors though does display black bars at either side. The most common resolutions for the 21x9 aspect ratio are 2560 x 1080 3440 by 1440 and 3840 by 1600. 32 by 9, also known as super ultra wide, this is the widest common aspect ratio available. With an aspect ratio of this size, you're effectively getting two monitors width without having the screen bezels. Perfect for gamers who want full immersion in games such as Flight Simulator. And whilst you're not gaming, they're also perfect for multitasking as you're able to snap windows to each side, effectively utilising a two-monitor setup. One thing to bear in mind, though, is that you'll need a fairly large amount of free desk space to accommodate monitors of this aspect ratio. The common resolutions for the 32 by 9 aspect ratio are 3840 by 1080 and 5120 by 1440. For gaming especially, the resolution or more importantly the total number of pixels in your display will directly affect performance. For example, a 1080p 16x9 monitor will be easier to drive than a 1080p ultra-wide monitor as the ultra-wide has 33% more pixels. This is important to know as usually reviews with benchmarks will use the 16x9 aspect ratio for their performance results. 
If you're considering an ultra-wide monitor, then it's important to make sure that your graphics card can handle the extra load at your desired resolution and game settings. Next, let's consider the different sizes of monitors. Generally, this is limited mostly by the space available on your desk. So generally, it's best to decide the size of the monitor that you want and then consider the right resolution for the size of screen and the distance that you'll be from it. Now, it's worth noting that the size of the monitor will affect the pixel density for a given resolution. For example, if we use the 16 by 9 ratio as a base and assume the same viewing distance, a 1080p 24-inch monitor will look sharper than a 1080p 32-inch monitor, even though they're the same resolution. This is because the 32-inch monitor has less pixel density with the pixels being spread out over a larger surface area. If, however, you're sitting further back from a 32-inch monitor, then there will be a point where the sharpness is the same, but you benefit from the larger size. A good gauge when looking at 21 by 9 ultra-wide screen versus a 16 by 9 screen is to look at the height of the screen to determine its pixel density. If we took a 28-inch 16 by 9 monitor with a 1080p resolution, then a 21 by 9 monitor with the same height and vertical resolution and therefore pixel density, the ultra-wide would be 35-inch diagonal and offer the same sharpness, with the added width coming from the extra horizontal resolution. So taking this into consideration, if you're looking at gaming in 1080p at 16 by 9, we'd recommend monitors up to 25 inches. For 1440p or QHD, we'd recommend looking at monitors no larger than 32 inches, and lastly, if 4K or higher is your preferred resolution, we'd recommend 28 inches or above, and then you can adjust this for an ultra-wide relative on its height. Also, depending on how close you are to your monitor, you may need to adjust this slightly. For example, if you sit very close to your screen, then you might want a 25-inch 1440p monitor for extra sharpness. This brings us nicely onto curvature. All the aspect ratios we've mentioned are now available in the traditional flat or curved options. The idea behind curving the display is to try and offer an equal distance to your eyes across the whole screen. This theoretically makes viewing easier on your eyes as they don't need to shift when you look at the sides of the screen. This is amplified for the wider aspect monitors as the edges of the screen become further and further away. Curving the screen also allows a larger screen size within the same width for a more immersive experience. The next thing to consider is the panel type that best suits your needs. There are currently four different types available. These are TN, VA, IPS and OLED. There are a lot of videos out there that cover the ins and outs of each panel type and what they're best suited for. So we're not going to go into too much detail in this video. For a quick overview though, we do have this handy graphic. We've included some pros and cons to each panel type, which should at least give you some information to help with your choice. Typically, gaming monitors used to use TN panel types, as these could achieve the fastest refresh rates, giving an edge to competitive players. But as technologies progress, you'll see that IPS panels are becoming increasingly popular due to their accurate colour reproduction at acute angles as well as their higher refresh rates in the latest models. VA panel sits generally in the middle between TN and IPS screens, offering a mix of the benefits of each, whilst OLED is the new and most expensive option, offering per-pixel light control to offer the theoretical best experience. It is worth noting, though, that there's varying quality across all of these types, so to get a better understanding of how a specific model performs, we really recommend checking out some reviews. Now, if you're a competitive gamer, then refresh rates might be one of the most important things to consider. Refresh rate refers to the amount of times a monitor updates in a second. This is displayed in hertz. So, for example, a monitor with a refresh rate of 60 hertz will refresh 60 times a second. The higher the refresh rate, then the smoother and more up-to-date the picture on screen will be. The most common refresh rate options are 60, 120, 144, 240, 300, and the impressive super fast refresh rate of 360 hertz. Announced last year, Asus were the first to showcase refresh rates of this speed. Of course, we've already covered that monitor in another video, so if you'd like to know more about it, then we've got a link in the description for you. Now, one of the main things you'll need to consider is what frame rates your graphics card can handle. While typically it's recommended to get the fastest refresh rate that you can, it won't be too much of a benefit if your graphics card can't keep up. To get the most benefit out of your setup, 
we recommend getting a monitor which has the same refresh rate as your GPU can handle. So it really does depend on your use case scenario. And not only that, but budget is probably a deciding factor. Naturally, as you'd expect, the faster refresh rates do come at a higher price than their slower refresh rate counterparts. Next up is Adaptive Sync Technology. Adaptive Sync Technologies work to provide a smoother gaming experience. They work to eliminate screen tearing, which not only looks unpleasant, but can take away from the immersive experience of some games. There are three options available right now. Adaptive Sync, AMD FreeSync and Nvidia G-Sync. Adaptive Sync is a standard implemented by Visa, the Video Electronic Standards Association, that essentially allows a monitor to be synced up to a graphics card. AMD FreeSync is essentially AMD's adaptation of this standard, with FreeSync 2 and FreeSync HDR having extra features that aren't fully supported by the Adaptive Sync standard. Then G-Sync is Nvidia's own version that doesn't use the Adaptive Sync standard, but instead has a special chip added to sync up the GPU and monitor. This is technically the best implementation and provides the best results, but it does come at a price premium as it costs extra for manufacturers to add special hardware to their products. Recently, however, that all changed when Nvidia introduced G-Sync Compatible and G-Sync Ultimate. Compatible is essentially an adaptation of the Adaptive Sync standard like the AMD variation and will work with lots of monitors, including AMD FreeSync, as long as they're over a certain standard whilst Ultimate denotes the monitors that have the hardware chip. In the last couple of years, Nvidia has also been working with monitor manufacturers and game developers to bring the lowest latency experience, and this has resulted in the development of Nvidia Reflex technology. By reducing the system latency, this increases responsiveness, aiming precision, and provides you with a more up-to-date location of your opponents. Many esports and high-end gaming monitors now support this technology, and also feature a built-in NVIDIA Reflex Latency Analyzer. The analyzer measures the time it takes your mouse to register an input to the time it takes for your monitor to display the input. If you'd like to know more about this technology and how it could help improve your gaming performance, then we've put a link to that video in the description too. HDR, which stands for High Dynamic Range, is another feature that's now available with certain models of monitors. For gamers who want a more immersive experience in single-player games, HDR is recommended. With more brands now adopting the technology, there's no better time to take advantage of it. HDR has a certification process that tells you how much of the standard a monitor can support. These are split into tiers starting at HDR400 and going through to HDR1400. The last technical feature that you need to look at is the backlight technology that's used. This can differ depending on the panel type, but essentially falls into one of two categories for most monitors, backlit or array. Backlit is essentially when you have a single light source either behind or to the sides that lights the whole display. Raising or lowering the brightness of this light will affect the whole display at the same time. Generally, this results in poor HDR implementation as having a dark scene with even one bright light source in it requires the backlight to be on full brightness leading to the blacks looking more grey as light bleeds through the closed pixels. On the other hand, array lighting usually involves having a mesh of individual LEDs spread across the screen. These are controlled in zones so that one zone can be lit to a different degree than another, allowing larger contrast between light and dark. The more LEDs and zones that you have, the more granular control you can get within any one scene. However, more LEDs means more cost, so these displays are more expensive than backlit ones. So that gives you a good look at all the technical differences you might need to know about when choosing your new monitor, but it doesn't stop there, of course. There are some features that might not improve the colour or picture quality, but they will improve the practicality and ease of use. We're talking about things like stands, something so simple, but choose one that's limited with movement and it might make getting it into the right position to feel comfortable a struggle. All monitors typically come with a stand, but check to see the adjustability of the stand before you purchase. Often, cheaper monitors will only come with a stand that allows for slight tilting movement, whereas more expensive monitors feature not only heavier and more sturdy stands, but also allow for more movement such as panning, tilting, height adjustment, and even rotational adjustment should you ever need to use your monitor vertically. Most monitors typically feature mounting options on the back, enabling you to purchase a monitor stand separately at a later date. 
Next up is connections. One input is often enough for most people, but it's always worth having extra inputs should you decide you want to connect another device up in the future. After all, you don't want to be awkwardly unplugging devices every time you want to load up your games console, Blu-ray player, or even another PC. The standard inputs nowadays are DisplayPort and HDMI, and with the announcement of HDMI 2.1, it won't be long until we see a huge range of monitors on the market supporting this. Currently, Asus, LG and Gigabyte are the first to implement HDMI 2.1, which allows for 4K gaming at frame rates up to 120 frames per second. And it doesn't stop there. It will also allow up to 8K, also at 120 FPS. So if you're a PS5 or Xbox Series X user, you'll be able to take advantage of the 2.1 input. Of course, you'll have to make sure you have an ultra high speed HDMI cable just to make sure it's supported. As well as display connections, other connections that can be really useful to have in your monitor is a USB hub, which allows you to quickly and easily access more USB ports in your monitor, rather than struggling to reach around the back of your computer if it's hidden away, for example. Some monitors also include headphones and microphone connectors too, which can come in handy. Blue light filter mode, which features on several monitors, can be a great feature for users who spend long sessions at the screen. This feature reduces the amount of blue light emitted by the screen, which helps to reduce eye strain. Additionally, other monitors also have a backlight strobing mode, which reduces motion blur and eye strain during gameplay. So there we have it. That should be all the information that you need to know when it comes to upgrading or even buying your first gaming monitor. If you enjoyed this video or found it helpful, then please give us a like. And if you want to see more content like this, then don't forget to subscribe so you're kept up to date with all the content that we're making. And of course, if you do have any questions, then let us know in the comments.